has done marvelous, he has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord, he has marvelous, done marvelous, marvelous, he has marvelous, done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Oh. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us the opportunity to watch this service. Um, thank you for the service that is to come. We thank you for giving us the chance to read more about your word and your son. Um, we pray that the service ahead will go in a manner that's pleasing to you and that those who are listening or watching it will learn more about your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How great is thy God. Sing with me. How great is thy God. Oh, see how great. How great is thy God.
Good morning, Sheldon Heights Church of Christ. What a blessing to worship God in spirit and in truth. What a blessing to join together in this cyber sanctuary, this virtual worship, and to praise God. Even a pandemic cannot stop us from praising God. Social injustice cannot stop us from praising God. Political unrest cannot stop us from praising God. We're going to keep lifting up his name. We're going to keep on holding on to his unchanging hand because God is more than able. My brothers and my sisters, what a blessing to be able to pray together, sing together, look to God together, trust him together, walk with him together. And I want you to know that there's some better days coming. Oh, we have been hmm, through the wilderness. We've been through some tough times. But I want you to know that God, hear me close, he's just not the God of good times, but he's the God that shows up in our bad times. He's the God that says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. It was Jesus that said after he gave the great commission in Matthew 28, God, uh, verses 18 through 20 says, and lo, I'm with you to the end of the world. world. God said, I'm not going to let you go. My presence will be with you, and I'm going to hold on to him. So when I have a Sunday morning praise moment, I'm going to show up and praise God. When I have an opportunity to, to listen to his word, to pray up together, and to give, and to commune, I'm going to do it because I understand I couldn't have made it without him. That's why we trust him like that. That's why we hold on to him like that. That's why we come to his word, to study another portion of his word. And I'm so glad that God is more than able. Uh, this year, we've taken the subject matter, say his name, God matters. And one of the reasons that we've chose that topic and that subject matter, because in the day we live, people are not saying the name of God. In the days and times we live, people are not leaning on God like they ought to, not trusting God like they ought to. But they're doing what the book of Judges said in Judges 24, verse 25. And every man did what was right in his own sight. Say his name. God really does matter, church. And these moments, worship moments, Bible class moments, prayer moments, inspirational moments, fellowship moments that are all available at the Sheldon Heights Church of Christ are about, is about us holding on to each other in fellowship and looking unto God who is able to bring us a mighty long way. On this morning, I want to look at one of the names of God that brings me so much joy, so much peace, so much help. It's the terminology Jehovah Rophi. Jehovah Rophi. Jehovah Rophi. That is God, say it with me, is a healer. God is a healer. God is a healer. Have you ever needed a healing? Have you ever been broken down physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and you needed a healer? Oh yeah, I know people say you need to go to the doctor. Yeah, I need to keep my doctor's visits. I need my diagnostic tests. I need to be seen by a specialist. I need to take my medicine. I need to stay with my vitamins. I need to watch my health. But more than anything else, I need Jehovah Rophi. I need the God who heals, the God who don't have to, who doesn't need an MRI to figure out what's wrong with me. Don't need to send me for CAT scans to figure out what's wrong with me. Don't need to do a battery of blood tests to figure out what's wrong with me. Don't need to put a stethoscope on my uh, back and ask me to breathe in and breathe out. I need a God mm, who already knows what's wrong. I need a God who already sees my situation. I need a God who understands Hmm. He doesn't need me to send my medical history. He doesn't need me to sign a release for all my doctors send him all the information because church, he already got it. 
I need, you need, we need Jehovah Rophi, the God who heals in the midst of all of our stress and our trials. I want to say today that God is for real. Prayers are for real. And prayer changes things. I want to say in my personal experience, in my pastoral roles, in my ministerial places that I had to go to minister to people, I've seen people that were dying. And I've seen the prayers of the saints go up and people like get some more days get some more weeks, get some more months. I've seen the power of God. I know the power of God to heal. And hmm, as I said a few weeks ago in our Easter sermons about the God who even healed the one who was most sick by the name of Lazarus. He had been in the grave four days and he rose him up. God is a healer. Even if you're in a dead situation, even if your body, even it looks like it's over, it ain't over till God says it's over. It's never over till it's God says it's over because he is a healer. Do you trust him? By the way, in a sermon I preached a few weeks ago, I said you can't connect to the power of God's name unless you have faith to believe that he is who he said he is. Hmm. Say his name. God matters. Jehovah Rophi, the God who's able to heal you and me. Oh, he doesn't need to do a lot of tests. He sees us as we are. He understands our circumstance and our situation. He's seen us and, be, and he knows us and he's brought us a mighty long way. He knows that we can't help ourselves. He knows that the help we need comes from heaven. Jehovah Rophi. I want to read just a few verses with you from the 15th chapter of the book of Exodus, one of my favorite stories of the Old Testament. In Exodus chapter 15, we see that uh, there are two parts to this chapter. Chapter 15 of Exodus has two parts. You know, uh, the first part, they're singing. In the second part, they're crying. In the first part, they're celebrating. In the second part, they are, they are crying out to God. In the first part, they're saying, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me, and you brought us a mighty long way. In the second part, they say, where is, where is God? Exodus 15, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, it is in the book of Exodus. You know the book of Exodus means uh, has, has X means out. It is the journey out of Egypt that God has taken his people by the way of the deliverer, the one called Moses. And the Bible lets us know that, that, that in chapter 14 that God brings them out of Egypt and they come to their first test. You do know there's more than one test. They come to their first test and they're standing at the Red Sea and behind them is Pharaoh's army. Got 600 chariots barreling down on the people of God. The people start to cry. The people start to moan. The people start to say we should have stayed in Egypt. By the way, by this time, they're thinking there are two things that are about to happen to them. They could only think of two things that was about to happen. Number one, the army would, would come and capture them all back all the, and take them back to Egypt. That's choice one. The army would come and take them back to their pain, back to their struggle, back to their circumstances. Or the second option they thought is they just going to kill us all. But they, but they forgot about the third option. Can y'all hear me for a moment? Sometimes in my human existence, I can only see human options. I can only see human outcomes. I can only see what's humanly possible. But because I am a child of God, he steps in my situation. He heals my circumstances. He brings me back to where I need to be. Hmm. Moses spoke and told the people to stand still. 
He wasn't talking about standing still in place, but he was speaking to their spirit. Sometimes when you're in the midst of a place where you need healing, you need to stand still. You need to not let your mind worry about what's going to happen six months, six years. You got to stand still and see the salvation of God. 600 chariots coming down on them, about to die, about to leave here. And Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says he, he stretched out his arms. He raised up the staff that God told him to raise up. And he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. They had their first test. The Bible says that God, not only did God spread the Red Sea, but the Bible says, if you're not careful, you would miss it. They walked through the Red Sea on dry land. This was water. That, it should have been muddy. It should have took years for it to dry out. But God sent a wind to hold up the, the water. They walked through on dry land, but that wasn't, real, that wasn't even the real miracle. The real miracle was that when Pharaoh's army, those 600 chariots came plowing behind them, and God set the timing up, that God let the wall of water come down and take out Pharaoh's army. There we come to chapter 15. They celebrating. In fact, of the matter, they singing and dancing. See, when you got good stuff going on, you just start singing and dancing. You started raising both hands in the air just like you just don't care because you're so thankful for what God is. They were singing. They were shouting. They were saying, thank you. But come close. Life is just not about mountaintop experiences in celebrating God. It's being able to walk through the valley and celebrate God. It's just not about the times when the sun is shining, money in your pocket, people loving you and you loving people. It's not about the time when you well. It's about the time where you have trials, troubles, and tribulations. It's about holding on to God. And in those moments, we need Jehovah Rophi, the God who's a healer. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15, I want to read just a few verses, starting at verse number 22. The Bible says, then Moses set out from the Red Sea. Sometimes you're going to have to leave the place of celebration. You can't stay in that place in that 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 just like weeping may endure for a night is short lived. So is joy. Four hundred and fifty six times in the King James Bible. You hear the phraseology, it came to pass. If it was bad, it came to pass. If it's good, it's not going to last forever. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 22, they had to leave the place of celebration. Hmm, you may have a good day, but the sun going to go down on that good day. You may have a good day, but you're going to have to close your eyes and that good day is going to be another page in the chapter of your life. Just like joy doesn't last forever, neither does weeping. But whether I have joy on the mountaintop or weeping in the valley, I need Jehovah Rophi to be by my side to heal me, that I might be able to get the peace that passes understanding, the strength that comes from heaven, the, the, the comfort that comes in knowing Christ. The Bible says that when they set out of the Red Sea, they celebrated. They happy. They joyful. Everybody talking about what God just done and what God is going to do. Come close. God don't test you in your good moments. He doesn't test you when your health is good. That's not a test. He doesn't to, to, to see if you'll be healthy. He doesn't test you about financial things when your pocket's full of money. He doesn't test you when everybody wants to be your friend. He wants to test you when everybody has left you and, and, and you're by yourself. See, you can have joy and be on the mountain and be happy when you get things. But when things leave, what do you do? Three days into the journey. And you do know three days is a symbolic number in the Bible. It's three days. And resurrection came after having death. Three days. Jesus rose up from the tomb. 
Three days they've been in the wilderness. The, the Bible says in the text, read Gilbert, I think I'll read it again. The Bible says that Moses led them from the Red Sea into the wilderness of Shur. Now, it looks like, symbolically speaking, as I read the text, when you leave one mountain, you look to get to the next mountain. They left from the sea to a place called Shur. You should be all right in a sure place. You should be fine in a sure place. You should be all right in a sure place. And they knew the God who had just delivered them from the Egyptians that took them to the wilderness of Shur, sure enough was going to be there. But it was really, my brothers and sisters, a setup for another test. The Bible said they went into the wilderness three days. You do know a wilderness is a barren place. A wilderness is a place where there are no vegetation. There is no vegetation. The wilderness is a place where you don't find something that's so important to us. Somebody said you could live, hmm, almost 30 days without food, almost seven days without water, almost four minutes without air, but you can't live a moment without hope. And the Bible lets us know that as they were in the wilderness of Shur, it was three days, and, and then somebody noticed them. We're in the wilderness. It's hot. We're getting thirsty. The water we had now has, has run out. And the Bible says after three days, they couldn't find water. But the Bible says that the people, Exodus chapter 15, verse number 23, and they came to Mara. And when they got to Mara, they got excited. When they got to Mara, after three days of not having water, Moses led them in the wilderness. They came to a place and they saw water. I can see people running to the water. I can see people ready to dip up the water. I can see people say, hallelujah, praise God. But come close. My blessings and my praise that comes from God isn't about what's down here, but it's about what's up there. And they put so much faith, they, oh, we've got some water. But you got to understand something else about the water. The same water that saved them is the same water that is testing them. The same water of the Red Sea. God uses water for transformation in the Christian life. You do know that it's by water baptism we are saved. Water is in the plan of God, and God uses water to, to, to save them, and water at this moment just to, to attest them. I want you to know that as Moses led them to the wilderness of Shur, the Bible said three days they came to Mara, and the word Mara, M-A-R-A-H, means bitter water. The people ran to the water, they started dipping up, it was too sour. It was too tarnished. It was too bitter for them to drink. And the Bible said they got up and they start grumbling, complaining. Now watch this for a moment. Didn't three days ago God just save you? Didn't three days ago God just rescued you from Pharaoh's army? Didn't three days ago God just did a miracle that you never saw? You are now free from slavery. You don't have to make bricks anymore. You got the Egyptians' riches in your pocket in three days. Does it take three days for us to lose our faith? Does it take three bad days for us to give up on Christianity? Does it take three bad things to happen to us and we say that must not be a God? How much struggle, how much test do we have? The, the Bible says that God tested them to see what they'll do. How much is it? Leonardo D. Gilbert, that God puts in your way to test you before you say, Lord, are you here? Lord, I can't handle it. Lord, I can't deal with it. Lord, I can't face it. How much do you need? How much do I need before the burden becomes unbearable, before the pain becomes just impossible? How long do we go before we become like the children of Israel? It was three days ago that God did all those miracles. Sometimes in our own lives, we forget what God has done in the past. 
Because a little storm comes, we want to give up. Because a little storm comes, we want to put our hands up. Because a little storm comes, we want to give up. The Bible said that the people murmured, and they wore Moses out. In the next word that the Bible says here in this text, the, the Bible says, and the people grumbled against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? And then Moses did something very powerful. Don't miss this. The Bible says in, in verse number 25 that Moses cried to the Lord. Let me tell you what, when you go through some trouble, you got to learn how to cry to the Lord. When you go through some trials, you can't, don't get back at people. Don't lash back at people. When stuff starts happening to us in this life, it's time to look up to the healer, the one that can help us, the one that can bless us. Moses was, was, was receiving struggle and complaint from the people. He didn't turn back on the people. He turned to God. In our most di difficult and challenging moment, folk, we got to learn how to turn to God. <coughs> <coughs> We got to lean on him and we got to trust him just like that. Listen what the Bible says as as we come to a conclusion. He says in the second part of verse number 25, and there the Lord made for them a statue and a rule and he tested them saying, and listen what he says to them. These are the words that he says to them. He says, first of all, I need y'all to do something. He says, if you will diligently listen to the voice of, your, of the Lord, your God. Now, here we talk about, he says, if you will listen, if you will hear, who are you in the midst of your struggle when you need healing, who are you listening to? Oh, y'all don't really get it. Let me, let me break it down this way. Have you ever been sick? Have you ever been sick? And then everybody got an excuse. Well, uh, uh, go drink uh, a, uh, uh, go find j j uh, just some, uh, take this uh, snuff and, and put it under your arms. Uh, go drink a cap of a turpentine. Uh, go get you some cow tea. And, and people got all kinds, if you take all the remedies that people give you, do you not know sometimes you'll be sicker? God said, look, this is the remedy for your sickness. This is how you are healed. My healing, your healing, he says, number one, comes by listening to my voice. In those quiet moments, do you hear God speaking? What is God saying to you in his word? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct thy paths. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my shepherd and I shall. Can you hear the voice? of God speaking to receive the healing. He said, look, if you want my healing, you gotta number one, hear my voice. And he says, not only, don't stop there, he says, in the, in the next part of the verse, he says, if you will hear my voice and do what is right in my eyes and give ear to my commandments and keep all my, all my statutes. He said, look, if you will listen to my voice, if you will listen and do, do and listen. Listen and do. How do I get healed, Brother Gilbert? Listen and do. Do and listen. Listen and do. Do and listen. Then he says, I got you. Listen what he says. If you will listen to my voice, if you'll do what is right. I'm reading um, Exodus 15, 26. If you'll do what is right in my eyes and you will obey my commandments. And if you will keep all my statues, he says, then some healing will come. And this is how, how God puts it. He says, and I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. Oh, you, I don't know if you got it, but he said something powerful. He said, look, if you will listen and you will do, I'll be your healer. You mean, that is the payment that I have to make to have God as my healer. I gotta listen to him. Everybody got something to say, but I gotta listen to God in my, in my storm. I gotta listen to God in my trials. I gotta listen to God in my struggles. I gotta listen to God, listen to God. And we live this world, 
Everybody has a way for you to get out. But is there somebody listening to God? He says, if you will listen, if you will do what I've commanded, if you'll keep my statutes, if you'll give ear to, to all that I've said, he says, look, see, God just doesn't say I, I will heal you, but he says, I will be your preventative healer. He said, all those 10 plagues you saw that I did just a couple weeks ago on, on Egypt, I will let none of those things happen to you if you'll just listen and you will do, you'll be connected to the power of my name, Jehovah Rophi. God says, I want to heal you. I want to help you. I want to bless you. I want to strengthen you. I want to, in the midst of all that you face in this thing called life, and, 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 and in this thing called life, if it's not one thing, it's something else. But God says, y'all saw all this stuff I did to the Egyptians? You saw those 10 spankings I gave to them. You saw what I did to them, how they suffered in pain and the worst sickness. Hear me, church. The worst sickness was the last sickness. Not just the frogs, the nets, and the blood. Not just the flies. Not just the water turning to, uh, uh-uh. The final plague that God heals us from. And this is my hallelujah final point. He heals me from death. Oh, the last plague, he said that if you put blood, if you just put the blood on the doorpost and when the angel of death comes into the city and I see the blood of the lamb, I'll pass over you. Hmm, I see something. God set up a type and a formula that in my life, in your life, I get healing in the blood of Jesus Christ. And when the angel sees the blood, he passes over us. Hallelujah. Amen and praise God. He wants to be our healer. Let God be your healer. Let God be your helper. Don't listen to what the world has to say to get better. The world has all kinds of things. And I'm not saying they aren't, they aren't good. But they only give us temporary benefit. What God gives us is eternal benefit. Oh, I need Jehovah Rophi to be my healer. I need him to be the healer of my physical body. I need him to be the healer of my emotional challenges I have. I need him to be the healer of relationships. I need him to, to be the healer of my finances. I need him to be the healer on my job, the healer at my home, the healer at my school, the healer wherever I go. I need the presence of God to heal broken relationships, heal things that have been torn down, heal things where I have needs. I need him to be my healer. And when God is your healer and God is your helper, let me tell you, not only does he bless you down here, but he blesses you up there that one day heaven can be our home. Somebody listening on the sound of my voice today know they have problems that only God can help. Why keep, you know, the Bible gives many stories of people that dealt with uh, the lady who dealt with the issue of blood for, for 12 years. The man who had been lame 38 years. God is in the business of healing. But he always asks us, do you have faith and do you want to be made whole? If you want to be made whole, hold on to it's unchanging. If you want to be made whole, he said, listen and do, do and listen. And salvation belongs to you. Oh, I need him, a healer. I need him as my helper, and he'll be your helper if we will do, listen, listen and do. He'll heal us from all of our issues. If you're here today and don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, he wants to heal you. For the greatest disease in the world is not cancer. It's not COVID-19. It's not heart disease. It's a disease called sin. Oh, yeah, God can take care of our physical ailments, but I need him to take care of my spiritual ailments. My physical ailments will shorten my life down here, but my spiritual ailments will shorten my life up there. If you're on the sound of my voice today and don't know Jesus as Savior, you need to, number one, believe that he is the Savior that God has sent. That belief needs to turn into repentance. Lord, I'm going to follow you the rest of the days of my life. 
And that repentance needs to muster up a, a confession that I confess that Jesus is God's son and be willing to go down into water we gave a baptism. He heals you as all your sins are washed away. And even when you sin, he continues to wash your sins away. What a blessing. Somebody under the sound of my voice today needs a healing through baptism. But somebody needs a healing that comes through, through prayer. In the midst of your struggles, you need God to step in your situation. You, you need Jehovah Rophi to step in your situation and quiet the storm of your life. He'll do that. For, for somebody else today, you've been walking with God, but you haven't been close. It's time to come back to him. Form that relationship. Keep his commandments. Do and listen. Listen and do. And let God bless you in only way he can. Let's pray at this time. Father God, we just pray for those who are in the sound of my voice. Father, we need you as our healer. Our situations in, in this life are so dastardly, but only you can heal us. Father, there are people under my voice that need to be baptized. Father, have them contact us. Let your spirit work through them that they will come and receive everlasting life. Father, there are those in the midst of storms. And Father, we pray healing in their situation that you'll step in and do what you did for the people of Israel. You'll heal them and help them through their situation. Father, there's people who need to repent and come back to you, form their relationship with you. And Father, we pray for them that they'll come back to you before it's everlasting too late. And Father, whatever the needs are that people are putting up before you right now, we just lift them up before you and say, Lord, help. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give all thanks. Amen. May God bless you. Jehovah Rophi, he really is a healer. After the storm is over, yes, and after the rains have come down, after the clouds have passed over, and the dew lies softly.
of service for our Holy Communion, I would like to invite you to read along with me from Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse number 14. Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse number 14. And it reads, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him, him being Jesus. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Verse number 19, and he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us have prayer. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this opportunity to commune with you. We're so thankful, Father, that you allowed your son to come into this world and suffer and die on our behalf in order that we will have an opportunity for eternal life. Father, we thank thee for this communion as we remember him and his sacrifice. We pray that we'll take it in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable to you. This prayer we ask in your son's Christ's name, amen. I'd like to invite you to take the communion at this time. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. We have now come to the portion of our service which allows us the opportunity to exercise our right to give back to the Lord. In Malachi 3 and 10, it reads, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I would not open ye, the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. We want to continue to thank the church for all they've done throughout this year. Again, we want to remind you that we have three ways that you're allowed to give. First, you may use our electronic giving, which is called Give Plus. You may also stop by the church annex and drop off your collection, or you may mail it to 11355 South Halsted. 
Again, we want to thank you so much for your support. Let us go to our Father in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, it is again that we come to you just to thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us. Father, we want to thank you for keeping us safe in this troubled world we are now living in. Father, we want to continue to ask you to bless those who are less fortunate and that you also to realize and remind them that as long as they keep you first in their life and look towards you, that you would provide a way for them. These blessings and many more we ask. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. for uh, leading us in worship thus far. Wasn't that some good singing? Wasn't that some good preaching by our senior minister, Brother Leonardo Gilbert? Now, I really want us to connect with you. Uh, those people watching us under the sound of our voices, we want to connect with you. In the next screen, you'll see a connection uh, platform where you can connect with us, whether it be through the annex or even through prayer, uh, so we can fulfill the need in which you have. We thank you so much for being such a great support. And we continue to encourage you to glean from the examples and even the, the lessons that have been left from Lazarus. Lazarus was raised from the grave, called by name. And in many respects, people will say that Jesus did that because if he didn't say his name, everyone would have rose on that same day. But Jesus does something beautiful. He calls him by name. And I believe Jesus is calling you by name to connect with us, to connect with us in a way where we can give you the spiritual fortitude that you need and the spiritual appetite for your daily living. God bless you now and forevermore. And we thank you so much for joining us here at the Heights where our love will draw you in and our Lord will always lift you up. God bless you now and forevermore. <laughs>